What's up, people? I am back for another video. Um, sorry, I was doing doing this so late. I was technically supposed to do this last night, but today I am listing my favorite movies of 2022, and I feel like <clears throat> it's gonna be ten. But I do think there has been some good stuff this year. Like, you know, yeah, I went through a lot of the shit last year, and I there was there's a lot of it in 2022. But I do think there was some good stuff, and. I mean, I named a little bit of them in, in the horror movie list, but I figured, and like I said, there will be some, some of them, that ah, some of the ones that were on the horror list will be on this one, like a couple of them, but I do think like there was some good stuff. There was a lot of shit in 2022, a lot of franchises died, but I do think there was some good stuff and in a weird way, besides like my number one, I'd argue a lot of my favorites this year are either one-offs or just, you know, not sequels or, you know, something based off an IP or something. Like, it's just weird. You know, unfortunately, a lot of IP stuff last year just was terrible. I mean, I mean, I mean, I named some of them more Halloween, Scream, fucking anything to do with Disney, pretty much. I mean, yeah. So... But I do think there has been some good stuff last year. So I figured, why not type to blah, talk about it so I can give people... Also, kind of, if, if some of these movies nobody has seen, figured, <clears throat> name some movies somebody hasn't seen out there. So, yeah. Um, Monday, that'll be probably my next video. Unless, if I do a video... Actually, no, no, no. I will do a video tomorrow. Um, I saw Megan last night. And I figured, uh, originally I wasn't going to review it, but um, I saw that there's people out there that want to see it. So when I figured I'll give my, I'll obviously do spoilers and I'll put spoilers in the title. Um, but overall, I guess really quick thoughts on Megan. It, it's decent. The lack of the R rating though, of an R rating really hurt it. Like a lot of the kills, there's just so many kills in there. I'm like, this would be so much better if this was R-rated. But apparently there is an R-rated cut coming, which is like, why didn't you just release that? It just shows, like, Universal, I love you, but goddamn. Stop doing this, like, oh, we gotta make a PG-13 because we'll get more money. It's like, come on. Deadpool kind of showed you can make money with R-rated movie. You Joker. That's another one. But, I, I don't know. That's the side point. I'll talk about that more tomorrow. But yeah, I'll review Megan tomorrow. And then Monday, it'll probably be like tomorrow night sometime. Then on Monday, I will be doing, I'm going to list my 10 favorite horror sequels. I can't wait to do that because I've kind of, I saw somebody else do that video and I figured, why not do my own? So, but uh, we'll get started here and get started on the top 10 movies of 2022. <laughs> so number 10 started from the bottom <coughs> number 10 and this is gonna like i mentioned this is me one that i put on my my horror list barbarian <coughs> once again thanks thinking wicked virtue for having me for convincing me to watch that movie i really like it and like i said i won't go too into it because i've i've already <coughs> talked about it in the other video but i'll talk about it for a little bit barbarian is just a great little horror flick the idea there <coughs> <coughs> this lady running this house it's already ran it out it turns out it was a setup from this creature and i really love it mother is one of the creepiest designs <coughs> seen for like a, a, a monster or character for a while um so <coughs> it's all around it was, it's it's an experience kind of movie like <coughs> you know it's very nice to just have a good horror movie again and the lead who played tess i think it's what her name of the lead i thought she was decent um justin long was great and, uh, yeah, it has a nice atmosphere. So that's really all I can say since I've already kind of did a longer thing about it in my best horror movies. So 
I won't spend too long on it. So that's my number 10. Number 9 is um is uh Terrifier 2. I really like Terrifier 2. I really, really liked it. Yeah, I do think the two hour runtime is the only thing it didn't need, but it was it's nice to have like a legit slasher character again. Like art to me, I can almost put I mean obviously I don't necessarily think he's in the level in terms of legacy, but he's all he's getting there. You know, Michael Myers, your Jay, like he's getting there, man. And it's nice to have a new slight a new slasher character. That's something we haven't had in a while, like a legit new one. I've been kind of saying for years, I've been wanting like a new slasher character. I mean, yes, technically art has existed since 2015. I think he came in that All Hollows Eve thing, which I never saw. I only seen the Terrifier movies. But it's like to finally have an, another slight slasher character again and violent kills. It was fun. It, it came out perfectly. It came out basically about the same time as Halloween Ends. And it showed you, you know what? No, don't watch Halloween Ends. Watch this. If you want to see basically classic Michael Myers, art was more classic Michael Myers than Michael Myers was. So, yeah, go see it. Terrifier. You already talked about it, so I don't want to spend too long on it, but I just figured I'd mention it. Number eight is... is... Black Phone. I really liked Black Phone, man. I'm not gonna lie. Black Phone was great. I really think... Um, I know my later list does sound like it's just my horror list, but no, no, it's we're getting to other movies here. Uh, but yeah, Black Phone, Ethan Hawke played creepy as fuck really well, and I really am happy to say this to to say that. I think mean, he's a great actor, but to see him play like a creepy serial killer because he normally is like the good guy and stuff. To actually see him play a serial killer was interesting. And I, even the actor who played Finney, I think was the main character's name, who was the kid who was locked up in the house, thought did great. I thought it was a little, little great one-off story. So I don't want to go too into it since I, I, th I actually did review it and I put it in my horror list. So I don't want to go too into it. <laughs> Number seven, Violent Night. I, I had to put Violent Night on my list. I, I had to. It, this one was a fun one. Um, I, I thought David Harbour as Santa was great. I love the whole premise of this action movie, Santa. That it's almost like, it's de it's definitely a mix of Die Hard and Little Home Alone elements. But it's a great one. I thought the little girl did a pretty good job. You know, her, she actually had some really nice chemistry with Santa. So, um, the action was great. It's a fun little flick. It's perfect. It came out at the perfect time in December. And... John Leguizamo is a fuck in real life, but I'm going to say it. I loved him as the bad guy in the movie. I really thought he, he was having fun as the villain. Um, and even the, the, the ending, the ending, um, scene where, not the ending scene, but like the, when he, when Santa takes out the, the military guys, with the, the fucking hammer, I'm not going to lie. That was fucking poggers. I was like, okay, that action's pretty fun. It's a fun little flick. It's simple, you know, not a lot to it. I didn't, apparently, they're doing a sequel. I don't really know how I feel about that because I just don't know how you can do one. Like, what are you gonna do? Just do the same thing again? But overall, I really, I really, really liked um, Violent Night. I definitely recommend it. it it's a fun little one. Um, yeah, that's all I could really say about it. But yeah, Violet Night. <laughs> Definitely recommend it. Number set six. So yeah, we're number six now. <clears throat> Day Shift, the Netflix movie with Jamie Foxx. I gotta I'm gonna be honest, I really liked it. That this one was one I had no expectations for. I just saw a trailer <clears throat> where one day I'm like, okay, this looks interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> and it's just a simple story of a man wanting to get his family back because his wife, estranged wife, and <clears throat> daughter can't afford to go to their school anymore, so they need money. 
So Jamie has to raise. He's a day by day. He's a <laughs> he's a pool cleaner, <clears throat> but actually he hunts vampires, which I love. This movie. It's just a fun little movie. It's not. It, <clears throat> <laughs> there's not a lot going for it. Like, yeah, it's a simple little flick. Like, it's, um, you got some fun action scenes. You got Scott Atkins for a little bit, just fighting vampires, which I love the way they explain vampires and they set up the story. And I think Dave Franco is, uh, is, um, like, kind of like the, the, you know, the, you know, those, these kind of movies where you have, like, the badass and then you have, like, the skinny kind of, skinny guy yeah, he's like the skinny guy in the movie but i thought he was great especially the scene where he turns into a vampire even snoop was great it's a fun little movie i would definitely recommend it it's on netflix it's only an hour and a half you got some there's actually some legit action scenes that opening fight scene was like holy shit i was not expecting this level of choreography and then the scene where he teams up with scott adkins and his brother and they just take out a bunch of i fucking love it it's a fun little flick it's really all I can say about it. I gave it a, like a seven or eight. I, I definitely really liked it. I remember like, oh, wow. I didn't actually expect this to be that great, but yeah. So that's my number six. Now we're getting to the top five territory. Number five is, uh, is X. I'm going to say it, X. Um, I really liked X. I really thought it was a great horror flick. It's like a modern day Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In a way, you could definitely tell those that it was definitely inspired by it. I think they did a good job with it. The old lady, uh, Pearl, is fucking, dude, she is fucking crazy, man. That opening scene where you see her kill a guy is just trippy. And the cast is well done. I thought Mia Goth was great. Um, as she's like your unusual, like, yeah, because she's a, She's a, I'm not gonna say a slut, but she, you know, has sex. She's not your typical final girl. And I think that's why I really like it. It's just, it's a fun little horror film. I, I definitely wanted more people to watch. Um, yeah, so that's my number five. Number four is Jackass Forever. Um, I really like Jackass Forever. This was one. I, same thing I didn't plan on seeing but I saw a trailer for it I thought it was really funny and my god this is I haven't laughed so hard at a, at a movie in a long ass time this one had me laughing it sucks that Bam wasn't there and yeah it you know if you don't really know Jackass you're not gonna understand this movie but and I'm not I'm some Jackass expert I've seen like a couple episodes of the show and then a couple of the movies back in the day, but I really loved this one. This one was fun. I even liked some of the new cast. The the fucking punch to the nuts. That one that one still got, gets me. But just all around, man. Like these guys just still got it. It's just an I haven't laughed so hard in a while. If this is one of those you definitely could kind of turn your brain off. Because like most jackass movies, there's no real plot. It's more about just the stunts. It's more like, it's a movie, but it's like kind of like a series of skits more than it is a movie, but it works here. And I think the skits are funny, honestly. It's a funny fucking movie. Like, like I said, I was in the theater, la I haven't laughed in such a long time like that. Not like almost howling, you know, it was like, I was laughing hard. I, I haven't done that in a long time for a movie. So, and it, I was saying this for a while. How was a jackass movie? In my top four of the year, but not a Jurassic Park movie, not a Scream movie, not a Halloween movie. That is sad. You would, in any other timeline, those would probably have been my top four, but nah. The, those other three I mentioned were all shit last year. So, sad. But yeah, Jackass Forever was great. I, I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. It's, it's, a, it's a good time. You could just turn your brain off drink, whatever, do what are you doing, and just kind of laugh. That's all it really is. It's just kind of, you know, dumb fun. So that's my number four. My number three is um, The Northman. I really like this one. This one was one I because I saw the trailer. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go see it. And my God, it is an experience in the theater just because of the visuals. Like, just the, the one shot 
where we see them attack the village and you got like the one shot kind of camera, you know, like which works, but just in general, cinematography, well done acting, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy should, in my opinion, do more medieval movies. I think she just fits, like she fits and gasp, she's a strong female character, but she's not like, she doesn't have to pick up a sword or, you know, pick up an arrow or something like she's just a strong female character bill skarsgård was great as the main character um just a great story it, i'll agree it drags and on rewatch i'm not the biggest fan of the ending where he decides to leave his family you know he's literally he literally left with his wife who's pregnant and they're, they're about to start their new life but he decides to go back to confront the main villain which was I get it. They wanted to have the final fight, but they could have did it differently. It was kind of weird how they did it. But besides that, very well done movie. Some really good shots, really good action. If you want a decent Viking movie that's modern, I would recommend it. It is a little slow, I will say, but it, it definitely is a good one. So... My number two... <coughs> is bullet train <coughs> bullet train <coughs> this is one <coughs> that once again I just I saw a trailer for it I was just okay this looks fun it has <coughs> interesting feel about it feels like a Tarantino film <coughs> it's like a mix of Tar um I've heard it said it's basically a mix of Snatch and uh, Reservoir Dogs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I could see that, like, I mean, very much is a well-made movie, just the cast, <laughs> Tangerine and Lemon were the VIPs, like, Aaron Taylor Johnson and, um, I don't know the other name of the other actor, but he, they were great, and that other actor is a lot, that, the black guy, I think Tyree, something, Something that's at something his name, but he, even though yeah, he's usually in like dog shit. Minus he was in Godzilla, which was okay, Godzilla vs Kong, but yeah, he he was really good in this. Yeah, him and Lemon and Tangerine are like easily my favorite parts of the movie. But Brad Pitt, the cat, like um, Sandra Bullock. Even though you mainly only hear her voice, she was great. Um, just an all around fun movie that had mainly one setting which was this train you know it got a lot of these different stories going on with the train the assassin chick was great even even like the fucking bitchy girl um that essentially was trying to be the side villain was fun uh michael shannon oh my god he was the best part of the movie i haven't i love michael shannon obviously because i'm from man of steel but he was great in this, he as the villain, even though you don't see a lot of them, you only really see them in the end. And yeah, definitely, this is it's it's on Netflix now. I heavily recommend it. It's a fun fucking movie. It it's very much it feels like a Tarantino slash um uh fucking uh Edgar Wright kind of movie. Like it feels like a blend of those kind of movies. So. If you like those movies and the soundtrack's fun, you'll love it. So that's my number two. My number one, I've I've already said to many people and I've mentioned it in other videos. Top Gun Maverick. This is one I had no expectations going in. I literally, I think I was originally even not for it because I was more, and this is just me and I know it's almost stupid thinking about it now. I, I almost wanted it to just... I preferred Top Gun just being in the 80s because of how the, the tone of that original one was. The soundtrack and all that. I'm just, just like... I don't know if I want a Top Gun that's set in the present. And they made it work. And holy shit, they made it work. Yeah, they made it work. They The way they actually took a sequel that, you know, no one really, no one, I think a lot of people didn't think Maverick was gonna had any expectations. I think a lot of us were like, eh, this could be a whatever sequel, and my god, it showed you how to do a sequel. It really did. Like, the 
this is how you bring back a franchise. Like, um, you bring back a legacy character like Maverick. You know what you do with him? You have him basically just be, he's basically the same guy, but just a bit older now. And he's wiser. And then you have Rooster. You have a great young newer cast. You bring your legacy character back and you have him welcome in these new characters. And that's what they did. They did it well. The cast was great. I actually like not knowing who the villain was. The the fucking the plane scenes were great because I think what made it great too was just a lot of the stunts were real. I think that does help a little bit. Like, like he's actually flying that fucking plane. Like he's flying that jet. So, yeah, that's all I can say. Like Maverick really is just an example. Like along with like Cobra Kai, and I'll even throw in the Creed movies. This is how you bring a franchise back. So I'm even now open to potentially a third one. I wasn't for that. I wouldn't even think I would have been for a Top Gun 3, but I'm kind of for one now just to make it kind of like a cool little trilogy. And the relationship between Rooster and Maverick, and oh, I, I got to mention the fucking Iceman scene first. That Iceman scene, I'm not going to lie, bro. I nearly teared up at that. That was such a well-done scene. So, but, uh, yeah, just in the relationship between Rooster and Maverick, it's just something, even though, yeah, he's not his actual son, it is kind of nice to see something like that in a movie, in, in a modern movie. So, heavily recommend Maverick. It, it, it's one of the best, definitely my favorite movie from last year, but it's one of the best movies of last year, if not the best one, but yeah. But yeah, guys, um, I wonder what y'all's uh, lists are, what your number ones are, but... Uh, um, yeah, I think, so there was some good stuff. It's just not a lot of good IP stuff. It's just, but, you know, I do think there was some good movies. Like, I just think you have to look, so. Kind of wanted to talk about some of my favorites, but, uh, tomorrow will be my Megan video. Um, it won't be a rant. Like I said, it's very much, I think Megan was fine, but the R rating, the no R rating really hurt it. So I'm interested to see that R-rated cut, see if maybe it makes it better. But uh, I'll talk about that more tomorrow. But uh, that was my top 10 movies of 2022. And cheers, Alex. But uh, <coughs> as usual, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Fuck Joe Biden. Peace.